Hi, everybody. Hi. Sage Nutrition Associates here. Lauren Brady. Hi, I'm Laura Sexton. Yep. So uh, we're going to just introduce ourselves. My name is Lauren Brady. I'm a registered dietitian and have been since 2010 is when I completed my internship and took my exam. My first um, well, my first job out of my internship, three days after I graduated, was a clinical nutrition or clinical dietitian position at a small community hospital. Where then later on I um, became the clinical nutrition manager and then um, hired Laura for her first RD job nice. when she was uh, fresh out of her internship. So she became our outpatient dietitian um, and I was a clinical manager because I had met Laura back in 2008 when I was doing my master's program at Appalachian State. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that was a lot of fun. So Laura and I have been working together for a long time. But um, so yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. So hi, I'm Laura. Um, I went also to Appalachian State. That's where I completed my undergraduate uh, course studies and absolutely love that school. It really helped prepare me for the education sector. Um, what's really cool is I got the opportunity to be a chem lab um, assistant, which was really neat. That was my introduction to teaching. And then from there, I started tutoring other students and then got some other opportunities when I went into graduate school to teach nutrition and lifestyle courses at the collegiate level at UNC Asheville, um, which was really, really wonderful being able to teach and educate those students because we have learned so much from that demographic and it's really shaped and molded um, how we have run our business and how kind of our main mission uh, and mission for our business. Yeah, so, so that's a little bit about us. Um, so let's get into a little bit of nitty gritty about um, Sage Nutrition who we are, what we do. Um, it's really exciting being a small business owner and um, kind of living out your dreams and your passions. So um, it's really cool that we get to be here on, talking about that and also um, uh, the RD exam. So um, tell us a little bit about why we started our business. Sure. So Lauren and I have been talking about this business for a few years. Um, I'm a product of exam review. I took an exam review course and found it to be really, really helpful. And one thing that we really noticed in the marketplace was there wasn't this kind of all-inclusive exam prep that included a guide, a resource guide, um, so an actual paper book, a lecture, and an online component that included not only sample and practice exams, but also some resources. And then having that combined with access to us through question and answer via email, was just something that we thought we could bulk together, combine together, but also put it at an affordable price. We really have a knowledge and understanding, being um, dietitians, that when you're coming out of your internship, coming out of graduate school, you're in a significant amount of student loan debt. And so we think it's just really, really important for us to provide a really, really high quality product, but at a valuable and affordable price. Mm -hmm. And so that just kind of started this whole pathway and we just felt that the materials could also be improved and that the delivery style and how we execute the course is different than others. And we really, really focused on learning methodology, using evidence-based practice, and just learning a lot about the education system and sometimes how faulty it is in preparing students to take standardized exams. Yeah. And so along with that, we really wanted our materials uh, to, like Laura said, be high quality. Um, our review guide is meant to be a reference that you can use in your practice as a new dietitian. And it's set up more like a textbook. It's got an index and um, it also has worksheets and things that you can work through um, if you buy it alone or if you um, attend our um, class. Our workshop, we go over that with you as well. So, um, so yeah, we just wanted a very comprehensive product, and also it being available online can um, open up the opportunity for those who may not have access to an in-person exam review. 
Um, maybe you live in Alaska or Hawaii or West Coast or, or simply don't have it. You don't have access to it for, for whatever reason. And also you um, may not have the additional money to spend on gas and eating out and hotel rooms um, or even a, a flight to get where you need to go to be at that in-person site. So you can save all that money and time by just logging on um, for our live stream. So we also wanted to make it available to those who maybe didn't have access. So, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about a little bit about how we actually run our um, workshops. So um, do you wanna start? No, you go ahead. Okay, all right, so um, how we actually run our workshops, we, uh, so someone calls and they say, oh, I wanna join a um, online workshop. Okay, great. So what we do is we um, include it in the price of the workshop. We send to you um, a paper copy of our exam review guide. So you get that. It's over 300 pages of information and we review uh, most of that, not every single detail of that. You can also read that on your own um, during our workshops. If you're doing one of our in-person workshops, then we have the book ready for you when you come, when you walk in and check in that first day. So then from there, over the next two days, is pretty intensive. We take seven to eight hours per day and review um, all the domains on the exam review, especially the most important ones, the ones that people tend to have the most problems with um, or that just sometimes need some extra review in. A lot of the concepts also um, you can read it on your own. So um, we do encourage that as well, but we, a main part of our workshop is where we go over the um, test taking, how to actually take the test, walking through the questions, what to look for when you are faced with certain types of questions. So we actually break that down in a lot of detail, um, which seemed to be really helpful, um, helpful for taking an exam. So um, we really focus on that as well, um, and also making sure you understand you understand um, good study habits and study methods as well. Yeah. So then after those two days, um, you or did you want to have did you want to say something? I was just going to say um, one of the things that makes us more unique with our workshops is the delivery. We are different than everyone else because we don't just review straight out of the book. Um, we understand how lecturing can be really, really hard for students when they're just being the recipients of information. Um, so we do have some components where the students are able to self-assess throughout the course. They also are able to interact a little bit more with our worksheets that are in our book. And then we really spend a lot of time on the questions. The questions are the most important aspect of this review course because that's what you're gonna be facing on the exam. And so the content and the knowledge behind it, yes, we review some of that and we review the most important aspects, but at the same time, we're really there to help prepare you. So that preparation includes a lot of different facets. So they're just beyond, here's what this means, here's this definition, and then how do you apply that on the exam? So we take a different approach and we just find that that is making us more unique compared to other people. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. So um, so then once we complete our two days of intensive workshop, either it be online live stream, which if you're online live stream, you basically log into your laptop computer mm -hmm. in a place that is quiet mm -hmm. and um, where you have good um, computer access or internet access. So it's good to hard, hardwire into that as well. Um, so once you once we finish our workshops and wrap up, you get access to our um, online portal, which has uh, great resources in it. Um, it's got videos uh, for how to study, study methodology, um, print out resources for um, creating your study plan, um, and also uh, the main thing is the three full length practice RD exams. So there's 125 questions each um, per exam, and those questions mimic the, the questions that you'll see on the RD exam. So those are really important. You can take those as many times as you want over a three month period. And we're also constantly adding more information to the site. And based on feedback and student, um, student feedback, we, um, 
we add things as well. So we encourage feedback as much as possible. Um, and then another as, uh, aspect that's really important to the package and our workshops is the follow-up Q&A um, that we can do via email. So if you come to a point where you're doing an exam review uh, or exam and something doesn't make sense or you have a question about a concept or something's just not clear, then that's when you can send us an email. We'll get back to you and um, with your answer. Uh, we're happy to do that. So that's definitely part of our package. You get access to us, your instructors, even after the fact, after you've taken our workshop. So that's really important as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's it. Mm -hmm. that's, so that, that encompasses everything that we do with our workshops. Okay, so where, what are the areas that we hear most frequently that interns are unconfident about or nervous about? Uh, do you want to answer? Start answering? Yeah, sure. So it really once again depends on the internship experience and the undergraduate preparation and graduate preparation. So each individual student may be stronger in a certain topic area. So for example, in clinical internships that are really, really focused on those clinical rotations, we find those students have no problem with domain two, which is primarily the clinical domain. And so those students often have deficits in more of the managerial areas or the food service areas. And then we have the opposite of that, where we have some interns who had more of an emphasis in management and, and food service, and so they lack some strength in clinical areas. And so we really try to be comprehensive in our approach and, and listen to the feedback from students and focus on those different areas and focus on the questions and how to be asked in those certain areas. And so that's really important to understand that each student is going to be individual. They're each gonna have some areas of strength and some areas of weaknesses. And we're just here to provide a comprehensive overview. But please note, if you're a dietetic student who might be weak in a specific area, you may need to focus more and study some additional textbooks beyond what we provide because if you don't have that basis or that knowledge in those general sciences, for example, then you may need to go back and revisit. So we just really encourage um, that individual approach. So as you go through our course, you identify your areas of weakness and then we just give you some more tips on how to prepare if we don't provide enough for you through that exam review guide. It's a 300 page book and let's just think that CDR examination covers a multitude of resources. So we try to provide as much as possible, but some students may need additional resources. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, exactly. So uh, just make sure that you have access to those resources. I know a big trend right now, especially with saving money and, and um, access is getting online books. Um, but it's really important to keep those higher level course books that you use in your nutrition classes. Um, so this is another tip for those who are who are still in their undergraduate courses before they're taking their um, internships is hold on to those books. Those books are going to be invaluable for you. Um, even in your internship, first couple, I mean, I still use some of the books that I got during um, undergraduate. So um, especially, you know, those foundational uh, books about chemistry, uh, nutrition, um, MNT, and that kind of thing, those are gonna be really important to keep around and buy physical copies of. So make sure that you have access to those. Um, okay, so what are some other tips about studying for the exam? Uh, let's see, do you wanna take it? Yeah, so some tips for studying. Um, make sure that you have a study plan. It's very important that you actually take a moment or take some time to develop a study plan. And it's just like with anything else when we're preparing our clients, for example, or our patients, we have to give them a plan that we have to provide structure. And so the students who are most successful have a study plan and they stick to it. And so when you are mapping out your study plan, you really need to plug in, okay, what are the things that are absolutely necessary? So some of you are working, so you have to plug those hours in. Well, then where am I going to study outside of those working hours? 
um, what location am I going to be studying in? That's really important to note too. We'll be talking more about that with our course, but having at least a study plan, a calendar where you're going over specific topics on specific days is going to be super helpful in mm -hmm. keeping you on track. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. So that is so important is to, you've got to study. And I, I think we get questions like, who, how many hours a day should we mm -hmm. study? Like, what is it? It is so variable from person to person. Mm -hmm. it, it really depends on you and your style and how much you have to study. And um, it's just not a one, you know, some people be like, well, I can, I'm studying for five hours a day. Well, that might be too much for that person or that might not be enough. So it really just depends on you and your situation. And it's good to get some feedback about that, um, talking with other people that have been in a similar situation, maybe another dietitian, maybe a mentor, um, someone that really knows you and knows your, your abilities is going to be able to give you good feedback on that. Um, another tip would be to, and this is a hard one, it's one <laughs> we talk about all the time, is to not drink alcohol. <laughs> I'll say that again, to not drink alcohol because it is, it is a depressant. It will give you that brain fog. Um, I know it's, it's a time for celebration after the internship. You want to go out and have fun and yeah, that's good, but make sure to limit that very much, limit that very much. Um, because alcohol is really, it's going to kind of take you a step back, so to speak with, um, how much you're able to do, especially if you're starting a new job or, or moving or all that, all that stuff. You really want to make sure that, um, it's self care. It's, that you're focusing on um, getting drinking plenty of water, being as alert and awake as possible when you're studying and when you're going about your day to day. So um, that's one thing that I, you know, that we we have to really think about is how much we're actually drinking. Because I know it's like Sunday fun day, and there's all these like in our culture now. There's all these, you know, we we surround ourselves with with celebration. So we just want to make sure to encourage you to take, keep that to a minimum. Um, because we are health professionals, we do need to know that balance in our own lives as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, any, any other tips? Um, and also it's really important to evaluate how much time you're actually working on focused study. So some people might think that they're actually studying for five hours, but how much of that time has been interrupted by, let's say, a text message, or do you have a TV in the background, or are there other distractors? Are you in a place where you're distracted by your children or by a loved one? Um, are you in a place where you're actually concentrating? These are all really good questions to ask because if you are studying for five hours, then you go back and evaluate and assess to see how much of that information you've retained or how much you can apply and you're not able to really remember that much or you haven't focused that much, it's not going to translate through. Your brain does need some focused study time so it's able to retain for more of that long-term retention of information. Mm -hmm. So instead of you know studying for the short term, which might be for those five hours, you're focusing for the long term, meaning you need to memory bank that information for a good four to six weeks or longer so that you can actually remember it when you're being tested. Mm -hmm. So that's just something else to remember and a whole other reason to not really drink that much or really minimize because it's a neurotoxin. Alcohol is. Lack of sleep can really affect everything. Um, we all know that proper nutrition, hello, as you know, nutrition majors and future dietitians, all of those things are really, really critical to a functional brain and you need all of that brain power to really be successful. Mm -hmm. uh, 100% agree, Laura. That is just key information. Um, that brain fog can really get you. Even if you don't like think that it's getting you, it's getting you. So oh, yeah. um, another, let's see another, another tip. Um, oh, this is one I like to tell uh, people before they take their exam. So the like literally like the day before you take your exam, don't cram, mm -hmm. don't cram because you know everything you know up until that point. And if you're feeling anxious or anxiety, I believe you have up to 48 hours to reschedule your um, exam. So self-evaluate at that point, three days before, 
and see, are you ready? Are you ready? And you're not rushing it. So reevaluate then. And then the day of your exam, it's good to take it in the morning because we're always fresher in the morning. Mm -hmm. And um, before you get it, try to get to the testing center 30 minutes, 45 minutes before um, you even really um, want to get out of your car because what I would encourage you to do is take a couple laps around the building. Just walk around the building a couple times. Get that good breath. Get that good, start engaging the parasympathetics and, and relaxing because testing anxiety is a real thing. And when you're shoveling coffee in your mouth, shoveling coffee, and then you're going to go in and take an exam, like what is that going to do to your testing anxiety? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so I would I would advise not to drink stimulants, coffee or tea. Mm -hmm. uh, drink plenty of water. Take a couple laps around the building before you go in and sit down for the next two to two and a half hours, and um, that's going to help your focus a little bit better. Yeah. And thank you, Stacy, for um, agreeing with us and. Um, Stacy mentions limiting coffee because it because it can to increase anxiety. So some of you who are daily coffee drinkers, um, you know, of course you're probably going to need to drink a little bit of coffee, mm -hmm. but that is not the day to get the triple shot espresso, you know, latte mm -hmm. um, because it definitely can increase your anxiety. And what's what do we want to do? We want to minimize anxiety. And so the best way to do that is to have a routine and also prepare yourself the night before. Have everything ready to go the morning of, so all you have to do is nourish yourself, hydrate yourself, and take yourself over to that exam site to breathe, walk, and prepare. That's all you need to do that day. No additional cramming, no additional studying, just preparing to be calm and focused. Mm -hmm. And another, day, another thing, the day of your exam or the day before or whatever is, is to have a support person that you can text or call or something that is going to give you that emotional support because it is an emotional thing. It's it's high. It it it's really feels high stakes and it mm -hmm. and it is uh, you're trying to pass on you know pass this threshold and so have a a mentor or someone that you trust that is going to encourage you mm -hmm. first off. Um, that you're going to do great, that you're going to pass this mm -hmm. exam, that you got this, and um, someone that you can rely on. So, so find that person. It can be anybody. It doesn't have to be a dietitian or anything. It can just it just needs to be someone that's on your side that yeah. um, can encourage you. So. And you can do this. That's what we always tell our students who are working with. You've gotten this far. You've already passed standardized tests, so you're have a, you have experience with standardized test taking, which is really scary. I would say the main difference is that you're using computer-based testing for this exam, and so you don't have those tactile experiences like you do with other types of standardized exams. For example, a bubble sheet and a pencil is very, very different than having a computer screen. And then also having a calculator that pops up on your screen versus having a calculator that is there for you to punch the numbers in. All of those things are very different than kind of how we were prepared for test taking as we grow up. Um, and so it's just really important to understand there's going to be some disconnect when you're in that test taking environment. It's going to be different. It's going to feel very cold. It's going to feel sterile. But that's really designed for you to focus and to minimize cheating and other things like that. And those test taking centers, they're there watching to make sure that you're there and completing that exam in the proper way. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I like that one. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Any other tips? Um, meditating. Mm -hmm. Words of affirmation are very important. I think just for our daily lives, if we're trying to get over something or trying to get through something. Have writing a list of um, affirmations specifically for this um, that can really change the way your perceptions are. Uh, it's there's lots of studies out there. Can't reference one right now, but I know that they're out there. Um, but yeah, so meditating gets you in that good uh, mind space as well. The breath is also mm -hmm. very important. 
Okay. So let's see. So let's say that you you don't you take the exam and you don't pass. What do you do next? You have advice for people. Yeah, sure. So if you don't pass the exam the first time, then statistically your chances of not passing start to increase. And so immediately after you do not pass that exam, you need to go home and write down as much information as you can remember for yourself. Of course, you cannot share that because that is CDR proprietary information. But from your perception, write down as much information as you can. So if there's a concept that just really, really confused you, or if there's a question that really threw you, then go back home and write down those areas that you need to study. Also, that exam is designed to increase the number of questions in a topic area that you might be more deficient in. So if you answer a question wrong in the first domain, for example, then you may continue to get questions from that domain. And so for a lot of students, that can just be very, very um, anxiety provoking. And so it's important to also understand too that when you go to take that exam, there are 25 pretest questions that you are asked that have nothing to do with your score. And so if you encounter a question that you absolutely do not understand, that you don't get, it makes no sense to you, you've never seen it before, that could be a sample exam question. So don't you know, hesitate and, and spend too much time on that particular exam question. If you don't know it or you can't answer it, then continue. So after you've taken that and let's say you failed, you've written down those concepts, it's important to revisit your studying habits. Take a moment to see, okay, well, how much time did I actually spend studying? What type of studying was I doing? Was it focused studying? And then also ask yourself, was I really anxious? Did I have a major life event? Was I actually prepared to take the exam? Because you need to go back into that second try super duper prepared. Don't go back into it just because you need to go back into it immediately. It's really just important for you to go in and prepare. And at that point, everything else that you know you think is the most super important thing in your life may not be as important, right? <laughs> we all, right? And we all understand that, right? You know, so oh, I might have to miss this particular party, or I may not be able to go to this person's wedding, or whatever it is you really need to prioritize and make sure that you and your career, which you've worked on for so, so many years and you've invested so heavily in, become successful. We want to see you succeed, but it often goes back to the student and then preparing themselves. We can give tons of resources, but it's how that student takes those resources and turns them into a study plan and how they apply themselves. You know, we're not there to make you study. We're there to give you tools and resources to help you become successful. Right, right, exactly. Uh, I love what you just said. We're there mm -hmm. to provide tools and resources and to help be that vehicle that really gets you to the place where you are prepared for the exam. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's you know, that I would say that really sums up a lot of what we do mm -hmm. and our driving forces behind what we do. And I mean, the number one thing about Sage Nutrition is, um, preparing people to pass the exam and student success, long-term success, short-term mm -hmm. success, short-term success by passing the exam, long-term success by being a really awesome uh, contributing dietitian in our field because we know how important that is um, and providing you a community and resources to do that. Yes. So, um, but yeah, that's our number one thing is um, getting results for our, our students. So that's everything that we do revolves around that. It's not about us. Nobody cares about us. Um, it's about what we can do for you. So, um, so oh yeah, okay. I guess this is a good place to end. Um, mm -hmm. So follow us on our Instagram at SageRDN mm -hmm. and Facebook at Facebook.com/SageRDN. And on our Instagram and Facebook, we're constantly updating with tips and tricks and trying to get um, people to be inspired and and have a laugh and also. Um, provide some, um, you know, good tips uh, for studying and, and the exam. And um, we also do some giveaways. We've got a giveaway we want to talk about today, if you want to talk about. Yeah, yeah. So 
anyone who is listening or who watches this video in the future, we are offering a coupon code for 5% off. And so um, if you are interested in purchasing a review course, you can go to our website, uh, www.sagerdn.com. And whenever you go to checkout, we have a coupon code. It's build up RDN, build up RDNs, sorry. <laughs> And we'll also include that information um, on our Facebook page. We'll also include it through all of our social media. Mm -hmm. um, and we are super duper grateful to Build Up Dietitians for allowing us and giving us space and time to do this interview, to um, share more about ourselves, and to help prepare all of those dietetic interns and students who want to become successful registered dietitians. We really want to see you succeed. We need you to be successful and contributing members of the dietetics community. And so please, um, if you have any questions or inquiries, please feel free to drop us an email, info at sagerdn.com. Um, yeah, awesome. It was nice to connect with everybody today. Thanks for your love and likes and comments and, and um, yeah, so just keep connecting with us online or, you know, yeah. send us an email, give us a call, whatever. We're, yeah. we're, um, we appreciate all the feedback back that we get. So, uh, okay, yeah. I guess we'll sign off. Yes. Thank you again to the Little Dietitian. Yeah, thanks, Leah. Appreciate all right. you. All right. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Okay.